What up everybody, Instructor Beats, back again here with another Fractions lesson. Today we're going to be talking about using multiplication to find equivalent fractions. Let's split it up and see what our objective is today. Our objective today, today I will be able to find equivalent fractions using my knowledge of multiplication. But before we get into that, we have to understand a couple key ideas. Okay, we're going to get into those key ideas, but first, I'm going to give you 10 seconds. You'll see the timer show up in the bottom right-hand corner. And I want you to write the number 1 as many ways as possible in 10 seconds, okay? So go ahead and start brainstorming and just write them down in your notes. you got 10 seconds. Hopefully you got at least a couple ways down. First of all, pr most of you probably just, you know, wrote the number one, okay? You might even try to uh, be smart and write it in different ways, right, with different fonts. And I, I understand that. That's funny. Maybe you did a little block one or something like that. That's supposed to be one. Uh, maybe you wrote it in word form, right? You wrote one like that. Uh, maybe you even started writing equations, right? Three minus two, because this expression would be equal to one. Or maybe you did one times one, right? So you could have had a lot of different things written down. So I'm going to go ahead and erase this. And I'm going to pull up some area models to help us with this thinking. Some of you might have started writing fractions that were equivalent to one. And that's where we're going for this. So here I have a bunch of different area models. And for this first area model, okay, I'm going to split it into two pieces, right? So my denominator would be two. And then if I want, let's say this is a brownie and I want to eat the whole brownie, I would have to eat one, two of those pieces, right? So my fraction that would be equivalent to one whole would be two over two. What if I split this brownie into thirds, right? We want equal groups as equal as possible. So now my denominator for this brownie or area model is three. How many pieces would I have to eat to eat the entire brownie? I'm talking about food because I'm always hungry, right? That would be three. So if I had three thirds, that would also be equivalent to one whole, right? So if you had a brownie, you split it into two pieces, you ate two of them. And I had a brownie, I split it into three pieces, which would make those pieces smaller. And I ate three of them. We ate the same amount. We had the same amount in our stomach. We each have one whole brownie. What if I split it into fourths? Now my denominator would have to be four. And again, to eat one whole brownie, I would have had to eat four out of four. And it keeps going on. What if I had six? So now my denominator would be six, and I'd have to shade all of that in, right, to eat the whole thing, and that'd be six out of six. What if I had, I don't know, um, 12? And those pieces aren't equal. I did my best. I'm just not super artsy, but it's all about the effort. And so I have 12 twelfths would be equal to one whole. All my denominators were different because I had to split them into different pieces, but when I ate all of the pieces, I ate a fraction that was equivalent to one whole. So two halves is the same thing as three thirds, which is the same thing as four fourths, which is the same thing as six six, which is the same thing as twelve twelfths. If you ate twelve twelfths of a brownie and I ate six six of the same size brownie, we have the same amount in our stomach. Why? Because all of these are equal to one whole. And this leads us to our first key idea, which is when the numerator is the same as the denominator, the fraction is equal or equivalent to one whole, right? So here you, you can see my numerator is eight. You can see my denominator is also eight. That would be equal to one whole. So that's our first key idea. We need to understand something else today too. And that is the identity property of multiplication. Anything, any number times one is equal to itself, right? And you learn that right when you learn about multiplication. We know the multiplication sign means groups of, that means repeated addition, right? So if you have one group of four cookies, how many cookies do you have? Four, right? They call that the identity property of multiplication. Anytime you multiply a number times one, you're going to get itself. Using that, if we take a look at these equations, 3 times 1 would be 3. One group of 12 would be 12, right? 21 times 1 would be 21. Works for bigger numbers too. 100 times 1 is 100. 1 times 3 million is 3 million, okay? Anything times 1 is itself. The question is though, is that still true for a fraction? 
if I have one group of one half, how much do I have? And the answer is one half. So it is still true for a fraction. The answer to any number times one, even if it's a fraction, is itself. One half times one is one half. Three fourths times one is three fourths because the identity property multiplication applies to fractions too. Two six times one is two six, it's itself, right? And so two six is equivalent to two six. Let's take a look at how we can use these skills to help us find equivalent fractions. Okay, so two thirds times one, we know is two thirds. We just talked about that, right? Is two thirds equivalent to two thirds? Is two thirds equal? Is it the same thing, right? That's what that equal sign means. Yes, two thirds is the same as two thirds. But what if I took this one, and this is a really big one, obviously I'm covering something up with it. What if I took the one and replaced it with a fraction that was equivalent to one? What if I took the one out and I substituted four fourths for that? We know, because we just talked about it, that four fourths is the same as one whole, okay? So if I multiply two thirds times four fourths, and when you do that, you're just gonna multiply across, two times four is eight, three times four is 12, is eight twelfths equivalent or equal to two thirds? And the answer is yes. And I'll prove it to you with an area model, but I want you to think about this. Anything times one was itself. So if I'm multiplying by four fourths, I'm really just multiplying by one whole. So whatever answer I get will be equal to the fraction I started with. And I wanna prove it to you with area models because I know a lot of you guys don't believe me, okay? Um, but I'm gonna prove it to you with area models. So first of all, I'm gonna do two thirds. I'm gonna try to make it as equal as possible. Okay, so here's two thirds. And then I'm gonna split this one into twelfths. And I'm gonna shade in two thirds here. Okay, right, this is my area model that represents two thirds. Here's one whole, right, this is one whole. I split into two thirds. And now I'm gonna shade in eight twelfths. Two, four, six, eight. And you can see, even though I'm, you know, I wasn't exactly perfect, you can see that if I ate eight twelfths of this brownie and you ate two thirds of this brownie, it is the same amount, right? So two thirds is equivalent to eight twelfths. Now, a lot of teachers, they just teach you multiply the top and the bottom by the same thing, but I wanna teach you why that works. You multiplied by four fourths, which is really equivalent to one, and anything times one has to be itself. So eight twelfths is the same value as two thirds, just written with a different denominator. All right, now that we kind of understand and we've proven with an area model, let's find some equivalent fractions for two halves, okay? So you can use any big one you want. Um, I'll just write down some big ones over here. And again, I like to put them in a inside of a box one. Uh, let's do five fifths, we'll use that. Uh, let's even be crazy, we can do 100 one hundredths, okay? Any fraction that is equal to one, you can use to multiply to find an equivalent fraction for one half. So if I do one half and I'm gonna multiply it by my big one, two over two, okay? And then when I multiply across, I'm going to get two fourths. So I know that two fourths is equivalent to one half. What if I did one half and I multiplied it by the big one, five over five? I'm gonna multiply across and I'm gonna get five tenths. And I know that one half is equal to two fourths, which is the same thing as five tenths. All of these fractions are equivalent. What if I went a little crazy and I'm gonna come over here and do it? and I multiplied this by a fraction that was equal to one, 100, 100. So I use the big one, 100, 100. I multiply across and I'm going to get 100, 200. So right here I figured out, and you could do this again in an infinite amount of ways, and you could use any big one that you wanted to, but I found out that one half is equal to two fourths, which is also equal to five tenths, which is equal to 100. Two hundredths. Well, how can we use this skill? Well, sometimes we know that we have a fraction and we know what denominator, or maybe it's a numerator, but for this one it's a denominator, that we already have. So we're looking for, hey, what numerator, how many eighteenths is equivalent to three six? So in this case, I'm gonna draw my big one right here. How did I turn six into 18? Well, I had to multiply by three. So I'm gonna be using the big one three over three, because if I multiply the denominator by three, the numerator I also have to multiply by three, because again, I multiply by one. So three times three is nine, and I quickly figure out that three six is equivalent to, or the same as, nine eighteenths. 
What I want you to do right now is I want you to pause the video in a second. You're going to use your finding equivalent fractions using multiplication knowledge to figure out how many six are equivalent to one third. And then if you have three fourths and your numerator is now 15, what is going to be your denominator? Okay, you're trying to find this equivalent fraction using multiplication. All right, go ahead and pause the video and then push play to check your work. Hopefully you just paused it. And right here, okay, um, I see that I'm going to be multiplying by a big one because that's how you do this with multiplication. And I know that I had to multiply three times two to make six, which means my big one is two over two. So one times two would obviously be two. So I see that one third is equivalent to two six. Here, okay, now I know the numerator. So I have to think, okay, three times what gave me 15? That's going to be a five. So my big one has to be five fifths. And when I multiply four times five, I get 20. So I see that three fourths was equal to 15 twentieths. Hopefully this was helpful to you. You have a new skill you can use. Now you know how to find equivalent fractions using multiplication. Remember, it's all because we're multiplying by one. We're really multiplying by one every time, which our identity property multiplication tells us is going to give us an equivalent fraction. Thank you so much for checking us out today. We really appreciate you. Please check out all our fraction songs and all our other fraction lessons. We would love for you to like, subscribe, join our Instructor Beats family, leave a comment, let us know where you're watching from. We always respond. Again, thank you so much. Instructor Beats, out.